Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to part six of Going Back to School for Computer Science in 2020. My name is Nikolai518. Today, we're going to be focusing on life at school and working towards your degree and kind of figuring out what's best for you degree-wise. Really quick, let's just go over some social aspects of life at school, and then we'll get into the academic side of things. Firstly, sit up front. Students who sit up front always do better. Like, it's proven, sit up front, treat school like a rock concert. You paid for the ticket, you jumped through the hoops, you filled out the paperwork, you got financial aid, sit up front. You don't want to be in back. Like, I literally can't see around this dude in front of me. Like, on top of it, your professor could have extremely messy handwriting or write extremely small. These are small little things you don't think about. I got a professor right now, love him to death, but that man, his handwriting needs improvement. It's extremely hard to read what he's writing. The other thing about sitting up front row is there's some sort of psychological thing that happens. Humans are creatures of habit. They don't like change. They figure out what time, you know, or what route they want to go to work, or they have their special seat in class. Okay, last row, last seat, that's my spot. That's where I'm going to sit. Chances are nobody will sit in your seat if you sit up front row. I got to class like two minutes late. I had to talk to a professor one time after class about something. I get to my math class. It's packed. There's one open seat, and it's mine, which is front and center. Psychologically, that class knew. After eight weeks of me being there first, every class sitting in that seat, they knew that was my spot, and no one took it. No one had the courage to take that seat. So it's a real thing. Like, if you sit front row first day, chances are that's your seat forever. PhD students teach classes, too. Not just... Uh, professors. So treat everybody with respect. You wouldn't want a situation where you said something rude or, you know, you picked on somebody or you didn't hold the door open for somebody. And now that student, that PhD student is now teaching your class next semester, right? Think about it in terms of power. When you're at school as a student, you have like literally no power, like almost none. But when you go to your job after school, right, and you're a manager at a department store, you have much more power there. So, you know, while at school, make sure to treat everybody with respect because ultimately you, you don't really have any power like none you have to introduce yourself to your professors even if you hate them even if you're like wow man like we're just like mentally two totally different people like i just i really enjoy nothing about you i would still say put your best foot forward and try to introduce yourself stuff is going to happen and exceptions are far and few an exception is definitely not going to happen if that professor doesn't know you, if you walk in late every day, um, you know, you sit in the back, you're on your phone, they may not know your name, but they know your actions. And, you know, typically you don't forget the face of somebody you don't like. You're just like, man, you're late to my class every day. You disrupt my flow. You sit in class, you know, you play your YouTube videos like, you know, no, of course, I'm not going to give you an exception. But if you sit up front, you're, you know, on your best behavior, you've introduced yourself to them and just some freak accident happened, there may be a chance you can get an exception. Getting an exception and fighting for points are two totally different things. I had an example once where uh, I submitted a coding project. And if you know anything about coding, I had a double variable. And in Java programming, you can cast. Like I did a double cast. So I did um, a mathematical thing and then I casted the answer to be a double, which was applied to a double variable. So it, it didn't break the program in any way, shape, or form. Um, but I, I guess syntax uh, just wasn't correct there, and, and I do agree that it wasn't. Um, but, you know, I got 30 points off for it. I was like, what do you, like, what? Like, the program still works. So I reached out, and I was like, hey, um, you know, all the teaching assistants grade stuff. Typically, the professors don't grade a whole lot in computer science. Professors have teaching assistants, and the teaching assistants pretty much grade everything for the most part. So I reached out to them, and I was like, hey, look, like here's the deal. Like I got 30 points off for this. Like This is – I don't mean to be rude, but like this seems a little excessive. you know. And he looked it over and was just like, oh, like there was a, like something happened there, blah, 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 like – you know, you're totally right. 30 points off for this is a little bit ridiculous. So I'm giving you back 20 of them. You actually got a 90 out of 100. I was like, great. So fight for your points, right? Like if it's something silly like that, sometimes even teaching assistants have their own assistants. A teaching assistant is probably just a student. Um, 
And, you know, they're busy with their own stuff, too. So they may actually have their own assistants who help them grade all the stuff. So if you know you've submitted quality work, don't be afraid to fight for your points. But when it comes to exceptions like making up stuff, that could simply just be a syllabus thing. Your professor could just be like, look, to read the syllabus, it's in bold and in red. I don't do makeups of any kind ever for any reason. Right. If a meteor falls from the sky and destroys your car while you're in it, guess what? You missed the test on Tuesday. It is what it is. That's going to count against you. Don't worry about it. Just do better next time. That's literally what they're going to say to you. So you may get a case where if you do know the professor well enough, they may make a small exception for you. Probably the most important one on here. Stay off your phone. It can wait. Like we literally live in times of zombies. Like when I walk campus right now, my phone is broken. I haven't had a phone for probably like five days and I'll walk campus and everyone is just like head down, just walking. There'll even be people just standing in doorways. There'll be people peeing while like looking at their phone, just not even paying attention. It's like, dude, like what, what is going on? This is ridiculous, man. Like, Stay off of your phone. You paid to be here. Sit in the front row. Turn the phone off. Phone addiction is a real thing. Your focus has to be the classroom. It's got to be. That that meme Jeff posted in the group chat, who cares, dude? It can wait. It's, it's not that important. And your professors are going to pick up on that. Professors know who is texting in class and who's paying attention. And that does factor in. So if you're not doing great on your quizzes, well, professor, what could, I, what could I do? They may just be blunt and just be like, you could stop texting in my class and you could actually pay attention, maybe ask a question. Like is, like, is that asking too much? So stay off your phone. Trust me. They see it. You got to be social. You got to meet new people. Um, you know, you may meet somebody who's a member of a club. And, you know, you go to that club and you meet a ton more great people. And you can also build a nice group to study with. And this is important because school is 24-7. School is not Monday through Friday. You may have a case where your class is on Tuesday and Thursday, right? You get out of class Thursday at 2 in the afternoon. You've done nothing for the, that whole rest of that Thursday, right? Friday, you didn't do any Calc 2 stuff. Saturday, you didn't do any Calc 2 stuff. Same with Sunday and Monday, and now you're back in class on Tuesday. It's almost been five whole days since you've done any kind of Calculus 2 problems or anything like that. You're going to be extremely rusty. My philosophy has always been you never have to get back in the mode if you never get out of the mode. So try to go to school on the weekends. Make a fun little thing out of it. Mike, David, Cassandra, let's go to school on Saturday. We'll meet up at 2. We'll work on the project for like an hour. We'll order some dominoes. We'll chill out. We'll work on it for another hour or two, and then we'll call it a day. Maybe Sunday you go in for an hour, or you can just, let's meet up on Discord, right? We'll, we'll have our little Discord server. We'll meet up. I can screen share, kind of show you what I'm working on. You don't always physically have to go to school, but make sure your gears are turning on the weekends. All right, let's get into more degree-based stuff. So there can be breakdowns of a degree. So for computer science, I have three choices at my school. The first being a bachelor's of science. The next being a bachelor's of science with applied mathematics. The third choice is a bachelor's of arts. Here's how they all break down. Every degree is 120 credits. Each class is usually three or four credits. There may be a random class worth one. There may be some sort of like internship program that goes for two semesters long that's worth 10 credits. Everything is, you know, you're going to have to do a little bit of digging to figure out each one. But for the most part, each class is worth three or four credits. True story. When I applied to my college, I said I wanted to be a bachelor's of science student. That would make me a STEM student. STEM students focus on math and science and, and all that good stuff. Uh, when I got the breakdown, it was emailed to me. So, you know, I sat down with somebody at school, showed them my transcripts. Um, you know, they were like, all right, this looks legit. We're going to send it over to the computer science advisors and someone will get back to you over the summer, which, which they did. And, you know, ultimately it was just like, Hey, Nikolai, you know, you're going to need 89 credits, uh, you know, to, to reach the 120, you know, we understand you do have some schooling experience prior to this and we filled in where we could, but there's 89 credits left. Uh, and you're going to need to do pre-calc, calc one, calc two, calc three, linear algebra, math history. You're going to need to do physics one, physics two. And I was like, Whoa, that sounds intense. Like, what other options are on the table? 
they were like, well, you could do a BS with applied math. It's going to be less science, but it's going to be a lot more math classes. So if you're somebody who wants to go into like encryption, this one would be pretty cool. Um, the last choice was a bachelor's of arts and they were like, look, um, it's going to be a little bit less math and a little bit less science, but you're going to need to pick a minor. I was like, well, you know, does the minor have to be comp sci related? They were like, no, it could just be any minor. So I was like, great. I already have an associates of science in business administration. Can we plug that in? They were like, sure. Ultimately, once I plugged in my minor degree and stuff like that, they were like, you need 55 credits to reach 120. I was like blown away. I was super grateful. I was like, thank God I fought for that and like figured out my options. Sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming and you're just like, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Take a deep breath and see what options are on the table. Because honestly, I didn't know that it was broken down this way. Um, see what options are on the table. Email your guidance counselor respect what they say, but at the end of the day, make your own decision. I was like, look, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to go with the BA. The guidance counselor I was talking to at the time was like, you know, I'm going to disapprove of that decision. I think the bachelor's of science is way better, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I, I came back with a rebuttal. I was like, look, man, you know, I've been working out in the real world for like almost eight years now. Um, it's what you know and who you know. Honestly, like that's what it is. And my goal is programming. I just, I want to be a good programmer. And to me, yeah, there may be that one guy in HR who's like, oh, the bachelor's of science degree is way better than the bachelor's of arts. There, there may be that guy, but how about this scenario, right? What if there's a student who got a bachelor's of science degree, can't program his buddy helped him out with all the projects, this, that, the other, right? But I got the BA so I've got two degrees. I've got an associates of science and business administration, and I got a BA in computer science, right? And on top of it, I know how to use GitHub and Git Bash. I know all the commands and I'm a solid programmer, right? The list goes on and on and on and on. So if, if that HR person actually, you know, I made it to the interview and I was able to speak to them and let them know all the stuff that I have been working on, I'm pretty sure I'm getting that job. You know, if you're just going to base people off of degrees, then it's like, you know, the guy with the PhD is always going to win. That's the highest degree you could possibly get. The other thing, too, is some cases businesses need the help, like yesterday. So if you if they need a Java programmer and you got a degree in Spanish or philosophy, but you're a great Java programmer, Java developer, you know, you very well may get the job. They in other cases, you don't even need a degree. Like there's coding boot camps, so some people don't even have degrees. All in all, I was like, "Look, chief, this road right here, the BA is going to be less time for me, right? Instead of the 89 credits, which is going to take me like six years to do part time and work on top of it, I'm going to go with the BA. I should be in and out of here in four years. I'm going to go part time. I'm going to try to knock out these classes the best that I can. I'm always going to go for the A or the B." Um, and I'm just going to really focus on stuff outside of school, like extracurricular activities, like the cyber defense organization club and going to, you know, little competitions with them and then learning GitHub and just educating myself, making sure I'm good outside of the classroom with more than just, uh, classes, you know, he was like, all right, you know, that's your decision and I'm sticking to it. There was a time where I came up to Calculus 2 and my professor was just brutal. Like I knew it was a brutal class and then on top of it, like this guy was, he was just, he was just mean. I don't have any other way to say it. Um, but, you know, I really thought like, I'm not sure if I can do this. Um, and that's where I talked to some other students and different degrees are also very good, but require way less math, way less science. Computer science is an extremely hard degree. You know, if, if this isn't for you, you should try out informatics, you should try out digital forensics, you should try out cybersecurity, maybe information systems, like, you know, there there is more than one road to a programming job, right? Like I said, some people don't even have degrees, like self-taught or went to boot camp, or they've got a Spanish degree and they're just a good programmer. So don't feel like you're locked in to computer science. There are other options on the table. Talk to the other students, you know, some of the students in the Cyber Defense Organization Club were like, I love digital forensics, man. It's, you know, way less math. I just, I'm not a good math student, never have been. This is more forensics and more interesting to me. So I changed from comp sci to digital forensics. 
And ultimately, the degree is just there to get you your first job. Once you get your first job, that's your leverage. And you can say, okay, well, I did this at my first job, you know, and then get your second job and so on and so forth. The degree is only going to be helpful for so long. So, you know, to me, spending the extra seven years to get this degree and the extra $120,000 to get just didn't seem worth it. The price and the time was good here. So I'm going to stick with it. And other people have tried to sway me off that. And I just got to tell them, look, man. This is my road. I'm the captain of this ship. So you do what's best for you. I'm going to do what's best for me. And, you know, that's what I'm trying to relay to you. So respect what other people have to say, but really sit down and calculate it. The time, the money, the effort, all that stuff. These are things you need to think about. And most importantly, don't feel locked in. You still may be able to transfer to a different degree and only, you know, the degree of difficulty may go down significantly but you may have to do an extra class or two, right? So is paying for that extra class and the time to do those extra classes going to be worth it for a huge significance of, you know, a huge difference in difficulty. Now, these are things you're going to have to weigh and kind of mentally and educationally, where am I at? Am I going to be able to handle this stuff? If you have any questions or just want some feedback, my door is always open, Nikolai518 at gmail.com. I appreciate you sticking around. I'll see you next time.